Hi, my name is Dr. Steve Runge. I'm scholar in residence here at Faith Life Corporation. And today we're going to take a look at uh, Philippians 3, uh, verses 3 and following. Because there's some really interesting things that are going on that would get a Greek grammarian really excited like me. But uh, it's kind of obscured in the, tr in the Bible translation. Uh, so what we're going to do is just work through the passage and, and see how what, what this is kind of more colloquially doing in, in kind of terms that are more familiar than Greek grammar and particles and stuff. But uh, the Lexham English Bible reads, If anyone thinks he can put confidence in the flesh, I can do more so. Circumcised on the eighth day from the nation of Israel, from the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew born from, of, from Hebrews, according to law, a Pharisee, according to zeal, persecuting the church, according to the righteousness in the law, being blameless. Basically, Paul's building up this, this statement so that he can build toward the, the end of, of this statement that says he's, be, he's willing to give up all things for the sake of knowing Christ and being found in him, not having a righteousness of his own. And, and it would have been much easier for Paul to just jump right to that and say, I'd give up everything for the sake of knowing Christ, but instead he goes through and does it kind of incrementally, a lot like what you do on kind of an infom infomercial today of saying, I'll give you this, but wait, there's more, you know, or how much would you expect to pay for this kind of thing? That's basically what Paul's doing. So it begins with this trophy wall of all these different things that would qualify him for him to place confidence in the flesh, things that he would prize and, and probably even people would envy as he makes a statement that I'd be willing to give up those things for the sake of knowing Christ. But then in verse 7, that's when you come to the first, but wait, there's more, but whatever things were gained to me, so referring back to what he just described, these things I've considered lost because of Christ. So figuratively, it's like him taking those things down off the trophy wall and, and exchanging them, being able to, being willing to give those things over for the sake of knowing Christ. And then as he comes down in verse 8, we have another one of those, but wait, there's more. Um, and this is actually where you get the longest string of Greek conjunctions. This is your uh, Greek factoid for the day for you nerds out there. The longest string of conjunctions in the Greek New Testament. There's actually five of them in a row. Uh, but more than that, I consider, uh, I even consider all things to be lost for the surpassing greatness of uh, of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord, for the sake of whom I've suffered all things, uh, suffered the loss of all things. So it's not just that he's willing to give those trophies up. He's willing to give everything up in exchange for knowing Christ. And this is the piece, this last piece, this next piece we're going to look at is, is the piece I think that's most overlooked. And it's not just that he's willing to give all those things up. Because if you think about things that we prize, those are the kinds of things that we insure. We get policies on them. So in case something happens or some kind of catastrophe, we can get them back. Basically, in this last but wait, there's more statement that Paul makes in the last half of verse 8. He says, he'd consider them dung in order to get, that I may gain Christ. And I don't know about you, but I don't, I don't insure dung, you know. I dig it, you know, I have to pick it up from my dog in the backyard. We pay a, a sewer bill to make it go away so we don't have to do anything. I mean, the only time you really celebrate dung is like when you're kids potty training, right? Otherwise, it's something you pay to go away. And so th that last but wait, there's more, as Paul is saying, I'm not just willing to give it up or willing to give up all things. I'm willing to treat it as something that I would pay to make go away. Um, that's how much he values knowing Christ and being found in him. And so these images out of the, the high definition commentary in Philippians give you a way of, of not only better understanding this buildup that Paul is, is doing here, but also provide a, a great way of communicating that to other people when you're teaching or preaching to help them understand this buildup that Paul's doing. So uh, even though the, the translations kind of obscure these things, the high def commentary is designed to help you draw out those kind of nuances in your teaching and hopefully it has given you a better understanding of this, this important passage from Philippians 3.